weighed 1,200 pounds and a guy stayed married to her. Do you mind that? Honey, do you think I look fat in this? I have noticed that there is a certain compulsion among stand-up comedians to go on stage and perform. It's a real need. straws in the back. My nephew used to work here. They rub their balls on the straws. <laughs> That's how they fuck around. Really? That's my nice way to pass the time. He yells at the popcorn. Okay, don't give us from the top. Underneath the pop. We don't want the top level. They jerk off in the popcorn. My cousin used to work here. So don't give us ginger ale. Like piss in the ginger ale. My brother used to work. Sounds like the problem might be your relatives. <laughs> Yeah. And then uh, you still gotta be fucking. 
That's the beauty of stand-up, though. That's, the, that's why it's closest to justice. Not that it's just ultimately, but it's closest to justice. Even Jack Nicholson, wherever he looks. Right. In the middle of a comedy show, we give him five minutes of grace. Right. And then he'd be like, okay, Jack, you know, if you're not making us love, <laughs> then go. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he's the most beloved person there is. Right. So in the end, whatever it is, whether it's three days or seven days, you're still irritated. Still annoyed, still frustrated, still hating the whole experience all the way through. <laughs> and now my point here. Thank you. 
your life in your hands. Is he bringing me up? Is he? Yeah, it's from zero. Okay. Normally what I do is I, I, I open with like three or four matches, do a couple of new stuff, and then I go in, you know, like I'm the right way to do it. You always need to establish yourself. Establish the audience. Because you're never really comfortable, even though you may think you are, you never really are. I did it the other night. Yeah, I've, I've done it too. It's, it's still a mistake. Yeah. And it's just like you get to the point, you're like, how much longer can I take it? What, what, what is time running out? Are you out of time? I'm getting older. I'm getting older. It's not. You can listen. I'm, I'm 29. I feel like I've sacrificed so much of my life. I, the last three years of my life. You got uh, something else you would rather have been doing? Uh, not you got other appointments or other places place you got to be? Not necessarily. No, no, I, not necessarily. I, I see all my friends are making a lot of money, a lot of money on Wall Street. I see, like, you know, what? I just see that like, my friends are, you know, they, they're moving up. And I don't, I'm worried they're moving up. They're moving up. I'm not out of my mind. I just, uh, this has nothing to do with your friends. I'm upset. Yeah. I'm upset. No, no, you're such a spiritual thing. <laughs> this has nothing to do with making it. Or did you ever stop and compare your life and go, okay, I'm 29. My friends are all married, all having kids. They all have houses. They, they have some sort of sense yeah. of normality. I I mean, I I what do you tell your parents? What do you, you know, how do you deal with that? They're so so you your parents. Know. Yes. You know, like, <laughs> your parents. <laughs> Let me tell you a story about, uh, this is my favorite story about show business. Len Miller's orchestra, they were doing some gig somewhere. They can't land where they're supposed to land because winter is snowy night, so they have to land like in this field walk to the gig, and they're dressed in their suits, they're ready to play, they're carrying their instruments, so they're walking through the snow, and it's wet, and it's slushy, and in the distance they see this little house, and there's a light on the inside, and there's a pearl of smoke coming out of the chimney, and they go up to the house, and they look in the window, and in the window they see this, this family, there's a guy, and his wife, and she's beautiful, and there's two kids, and they're they're all sitting around the table and they're smiling and laughing and they're eating and there's a fire in the fireplace and these guys are standing there in their suits and they're wet and they're shivering and they're holding their instruments and they're watching this incredible Norman Rockwell scene. One guy turns to the other guy and goes, how do people live like that? That's what it's about. It was beautiful.